Hello everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a very different kind of Super Nintendo game, and that happens to be the story of Hyvatavo. And it was developed and published by Hecht and released in 1993. So for those that are unfamiliar with the company Hecht, they actually put out an action platformer on the Famicom called Moon Crystal, which I did review before and I have to say, it was pretty great. And ever since I heard about that game, I actually found out about this game that I'm reviewing, and for the longest time, this game never had a fan translation until recently. And I gotta thank DDS Translations, Flash PV, and Tom for making this happen, for that this one was on my list of ones to get fan translated for a long while, and I'm so glad it is now. So the game is considered as an adventure game, where it is based after Kenji Miyazawa's work, who just ever so happens to be a real-life writer and poet. And for any old-school anime fans out there, one of his works was what inspired uh, Galaxy Express 999, which is pretty great. So now, let's begin and talk about the game's story. So you play as some guy who arrives in a mystical world called Hytatavo. And yeah, I'm well aware that I am screwing up the name badly, but you all know what I'm talking about. So the main character you play as doesn't even have a name whatsoever. And your main goal is to not only explore the magical world, but also to uh, collect journals that were written by Kenji Miyazawa. Yeah, this game is based after Kenji Miyazawa, and it happens to have books that are by him, and also he just happens to appear in the game, so yeah, it's like Bookception. So throughout the game, you're trying to look for Miyazawa himself while also trying to collect his books. And every chapter in the game is all based after some of his stories and poems that he wrote. So yeah, it's a pretty simple story, and we'll talk a little bit more about it later on in the video. So now, let's get moving on to the gameplay, and well, all you do in the game is you walk around, you talk to people, you collect items, and yeah, that's really it. Yeah, as you might have noticed, this isn't a game about action. So yeah, this is not the kind of game that you'd be going around killing everything in sight, stealing cars, doing drugs, and banging hookers. Well, actually, thinking about it now, maybe you are doing drugs, because some of the things that happen in this game are pretty damn weird. For an example, there's a scene where you get to talk to a fox and a tree at the same time. I mean, what, were you expecting two human characters to talk to each other? Pfft, don't be ridiculous. But to be serious, though, the gameplay in this game is very simple, and there's not a whole lot of things I get to talk about. I mean, even the controls in the game, I really don't need to say much. I mean, you just walk around, you select things, you go into your inventory, and that's literally it. Although one good thing I do like about this game with the walking, though, is that whenever you are walking in front of something, like, let's say, like, a tree gets in your way, your character will automatically align itself exactly where you need to go, so that's actually pretty helpful. But yeah, it's a pretty old-school adventure game. And in a strange way, I guess you could also say that this game is sort of like a visual novel, but just ever so happens to have exploration. Because, just as an example, like the Danganronpa games, those are considered visual novels, but yet, they have many parts in the game where you get to walk around the school and collect items. And this game is pretty much like that, but without the batshit craziness of a story. So now, let's get moving on and talk about the other things, like the graphics, and the graphics for this game are really fucking good. So the game has a lot of color and texture, which looks really nice. All of the characters look pretty good, and I like the character portraits. And those uh, little picture cutscenes, I guess you can call them, actually look really, really nice. But as much as I love the way how this game looks, I definitely don't think it's the most, like, technical, advanced-looking game on the system, like, it doesn't push its limits or any way, but it's really the art direction and the art style that really makes it pop. And I have to mention this just out of amusement, though, but Charlie Chaplin is in this game. Although it's just a picture of him in a movie theater, but still, they actually nailed the way how he looks, though. But overall, for the graphics, I do think that this is a very nice-looking game, and I really can't complain about anything. And now, as for the game's music, the music in this one is just fucking fantastic. Every single song in here, I actually really like a lot, and they all fit with the scenes perfectly. In fact, I do get a kind of uh, Final Fantasy vibe from some of the songs, which is by no means bad at all, because damn, that's like amazing. 
And speaking of RPGs, the same composer that did the music for this game, which happens to be Tukasa Tawada, also did the Pokemon games on the GameCube, you know, like Colosseum and Gale of Darkness, so that right there is amazing. And just like the graphics, I can't praise it enough, I definitely do think that the music in this game is probably one of my many favorite SNES soundtracks, and that's really saying something. So yeah, even if you're not a fan of like adventure games like this, I can highly recommend checking out the music. Now, if you wanted to go out and buy this game, now, because this is a Famicom game, of course, if you do import it, the game won't be in English unless you use one of those uh, clone consoles that you can patch games with. But I am pretty happy to say that the game is actually pretty damn cheap for a Super Famicom game in this day and age. So for a loose cart, the lowest I've seen it for was $15, and the highest I've seen it for was $24. And for a complete in box, I only found one, and that happened to go for $85, but I kind of expected that. Although I haven't found any reproduction cars of the game yet, but I'm sure they probably might pop up eventually. So yeah, if you do want to go out and buy the original cart for whatever reason you might have, at least you won't be paying an arm and a leg for it. So now, as for my overall thoughts on the story of Hyvatavo, is that... I'm really at a loss here because I do like this game, but it's hard to explain why I like it. Because the thing is, this game really doesn't have a whole lot to offer with it, it's also very short, but for some reason, I was really intrigued by it and I ended up actually kind of enjoying it on a weird level. So as for the story itself, like, I thought it was pretty interesting, but it was nothing like over the top or anything mind blowing like Zero Escape. But the thing that really makes it shine through is really the characters, the writing of the game, and also just the fact that everything just has like a really unique charm and lightheartedness to it. It's one of those games that's more like an experience than anything. Another good example of this would be like the game LSD Dream Emulator on the PS1, where both games just walk around and look at weird shit. And there's really not a whole lot to the game's gameplay, but for some reason, you just kinda want to play more of it. But the other things that really help out with this game to make it even more intriguing is, like I said, with the amazing graphics and music. Because I have a feeling if this game's graphics and music were not nearly as good as what they were, then it would be a totally different experience. So knowing all this, obviously, this is not gonna be a game for everyone. I can guarantee you that. Like I've been saying, there's not a whole lot to the game's gameplay, and I mean really, the only challenge that this game has is that it can be a little bit tough to figure out where you're supposed to go sometimes. But I suppose they had to make something challenging due to the fact that there's no fighting or puzzles in the game. But as I said before, the game is pretty short and only has 8 chapters, and most of the chapters are not very long at all. So if you had the time to do it, you could very well beat this game in a day. But yes, in a very strange way, I do like this game, but I wouldn't consider it to be among the best uh, adventure style games that I've ever played, but it was at the very least very interesting throughout its runtime. But I am at the very least happy that I did eventually play through this game for that it was one I've always wanted to play for a long time. With that said, thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day. Do you know any places where sailors like to hang out around here? Meow.